In 2020, photovoltaic energy is expected to be the most promising part of energy industry thanks to its competitive cost of production. There is a precondition for its realization, however development of a new technology that overcomes limitations of conventional solar cells. In that sense, the solid-state Provoskite solar cell first developed by Professor Park's team is the most winning alternative. Provoskite consists of two cations combined with three anions, a three-dimensional crystal structure. The central cation is metal like lead, and a cation at each vertex is organic material like methyl ammonium. Halogen elements like iodine are located as anions in the middle of the vertices. As provoskite features an outstanding absorption coefficient, it can replace organic dyes of conventional dye-sensitized solar cell. However, we have an issue here. Liquid electrolyte inside the cell dissolves provoskite, compromising stability. Professor Park's team solved this by adopting a new technology with a solid hole transporting material instead of liquid electrolyte. In terms of the power conversion efficiency of a provoskite solar cell that uses a solid hole transporting material, it was merely 9.7% in the initial stage of development, but dramatically improved to 20.4% in a matter of three years. It still keeps rising. Costing only one-tenth of silicon solar cell, realizing equivalent efficiency is possible since its raw material is cheap and manufacturing process is quite simple. Its figurative structure was identical with DSSC in the beginning and later developed into meso-super mesoscopic and planar structures accordingly. It was possible to substantially reduce its thickness. This is because provoskite, unlike dyes, demonstrates much higher absorption property along with excellent charge transportation. The provoskite solar cell has not only exceptional durability, but outstanding flexibility. Its three-dimensional crystal structure is fully restored to the original state in the course of being bent and unfolded. Being thin, light, and flexible is a great advantage. For a high-efficiency solar cell, high-quality provoskite is requisite. In a general process, methyl ammonium iodide and PBI2 are dissolved in DMF for spin coating. A problem at this point is that the solvent evaporates too fast, generating small and non-uniform provoskite crystals. The research team developed a technology to manufacture high-quality crystal using a duct. When dissolving methyl ammonium iodide and PBI2 in DMF solvent, DMSO was added in the course of spin coating so that the evaporated solvent does not form crystals. This is what we call adduct. Such adduct turns into quality provoskite during heat treatment and DMSO disappears and crystal growth rate is controlled. Grains can be observed when the surface of perovskite is enlarged. The groove between the grains hinders electrical properties. The research team developed a non-stoichiometric adduct technology to maximize electrical efficiency of perovskite. It was identified that if adduct is made by adding a slightly excess methyl ammonium iodide in the course of making a solution, the unreacted methyl ammonium iodide left after crystallization sticks to the grain groove, improving electrical characteristics. 
In such a case, the affected area even serves as a pathway for electrical conduction. This technology is innovative as it enables fast manufacturing of high-efficiency solar cells through the low-temperature solution process using inexpensive raw materials. Its distinctive feature maximizes efficiency of perovskite. It has a wide range of applications such as alternative materials of conventional photovoltaic system, electric car charging, and materials for silicon tandem solar cells, etc. It enables large area coating and can be used for a wide range of applications thanks to its thinness, lightness, and flexibility. The durability of this technology was proven by demonstrating stable efficiency even at 85 degrees Celsius as well, heralding a new innovation in the solar cell industry. This technology has been reported to the academia through as many as 42 papers. In the case of a paper published in Scientific Reports in 2012, its academic value has been highly recognized by being cited more than 2,400 times. Regarding industrial property rights, 19 domestic patents and 5 overseas patents have been applied for, and 6 out of them were registered. This technology has been fully developed and now is in the phase of technology transfer.